Psalm 79 and verses 11 through 13 is an interrogatory prayer for God to return a complete reproach upon those who regarded the calamities foisted upon Israel as proof that their God was too feeble, incapable of protecting them. Verse 11 and 79 reads, Let the groaning of the prisoners come before you. According to the greatness of your power, pres preserve those who are doomed to die. This verse could well be a prayer for Christians still in the world that is free from the oppression of Islam, praying for those being decimated, imprisoned, flogged, and decapitated in countries dominated by Sharia law. We have all been pleased to see God's deliverance of the Sudanese mother, Miriam Ibrahim, who was sentenced to a hundred stripes by flogging and then death in Sudan for refusing to recant her Christian faith. She has been released and has arrived in Italy along with her family, including the infant that was born in prison. I truly believe this to be an answer of persistent prayers. Although, as we know, the politicians will probably take credit for it. Hear the groaning of those held, and held captive by the heathen nations. Comfort them and preserve them who have been condemned to a violent death, according to the greatness of your power. Due to the degree of separation, great power would be needed to deliver those held in captivity. Power such as only the God of Israel has the ability to exert. Verse 12 of 79 reads, And return to our neighbors sevenfold to their bosom the reproach with which they have reproached you, O Lord. That is for God to return a complete reproach to those who regarded the calamities foisted upon Israel as proof that he was too feeble, incapable of protecting them. Seven is a perfect number, implying completeness or full vengeance, but certainly not perfection, as some will declare. Verse 13 of 79 reads, So we, your people, are, and the sheep of your pasture will give thanks to you forever. To all generations we will tell of your praise. The praise, the phrase, so thy people and sheep of thy pasture is a confirmation and an acknowledgement of Israel's continuous covenant with God that is followed by the by their praise of divine interpositions and will go on forever and ever from generation to generation. In this, in, in many ways, their commitment to the written word was accomplished precisely like that, for they have made a permanent record through the inspiration of God's Holy Spirit in the book that we all today call our Bible. No work has been more faithfully done than that by which records the God's ancient dealings with the people that have been preserved from age to age, that by which the sacred scriptures have been guarded against error and handed down from one generation to another. Dr. McGee writes, In that coming kingdom, their sorrows and their tears will be gone forever, so there will be praise from the generation to generation.